This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, good morning, one and all. So, myself, I am Shiva, and I welcome you all for this uh, Success Factors online training program by Tech Brains. Yeah. So, yeah. So, my myself, uh, Shiva, and I'll be your uh, complete uh, trainer for this curriculum here at uh, Tech Brains for the Success Factors training. Before we go into the agenda, let me first introduce myself. Okay, so myself, I am Shiva, and I have around 11 plus years of experience in the SAP domain with uh, my exposure on multiple areas where I've started as an ABAP HR programmer, followed by I've been into SAP HCM consulting, and from there, followed by from last five and a half years almost into success factors training, uh, basically into success factors. So this is about my experience as a, a SAP professional and the past 11 years completely into the multiple roles of SAP. And also to give you an exposure on my training experience, I've been delivering success factors trainings almost nearly around three and a half years. And prior to that, I even handled SAP HCM trainings. So across, I have trained almost around 700 participants in both these areas. Uh, and the participants are obviously from different parts of the globe, like UK, US, Australia, Middle East, India, all the places. So this is about me at a high level uh, at, at this initial stage that I have to introduce you. Uh, so about my SAP professional experience and also the training experience. And coming to the certifications, I'm a professional certified consultant holding my certifications on all these major areas like employee central, recruiting management, performance, career, career and uh, uh, succession planning, development modules, all this. So this is about me at a high level about the and I had a concept of the trainer's profile. So, of course, in the coming up uh, one of the session, I'll also individually take your intros, guys. So that gives me more and more exposure of your backgrounds uh, to concentrate in the sessions. Okay. But as of now, let me go forward to discuss the agenda of this session. So here, of course, this is the first session that we are now attending, the or demo session. Where here, let me take the best, best utilization of this uh, uh, one, one, and a, uh, one, one and a half hour of time so that it's, it's that you can have a better exposure into what success factor basically is and what you are now going to step into. Okay, the way how the success factors is going to have a career mig a migration in your uh, career path and all. Okay, so first thing I'll just to give you an idea about what are the modules that we are going to uh, concentrate here. Okay, and then followed by the details about the course. Okay, some some details about what is the advantages of this course and all, and immediately into the complete success factors overview. So, what is success factors? Where it started? What it is today? What the, what actually it has in store for us? Okay, what we do in it? How it functions? What are the systems involved? All that high level things at this early stage here at the demo system level. What our exposure that you would be requiring to get? All that we'll be looking at here. And at last, we can also have some time for question and answers. Not only at the at the, at the, at the ending, guys. Even at any point of time, if you have any uh, point that you want to raise, you can definitely feel free to stop me. Okay, perfect. So going into the first thing of modules, gentlemen. So the modules that are covered in this training, the two core areas of modules are the employee central, which is a very hot cake module in the market. And the other one is a recruiting management. Okay, so both employee central and recruiting management are the top uh, uh, modules in employees uh, in success factors. They definitely have the ranking one and two. So we have around eight to ten modules of success factors. But among the uh, customer uh, approachability and applicability with respect to career opportunities, the global demand, even anyone who is not into success factors now, if you can just go and search in the in the internet or any other career sites it's basically these two modules related job opportunities you find a lot employee center and recruiting management okay so these things we basically take in our training curriculum which have a global demand across the globe and before we even start with any module particularly it's so because everyone is here a new to success factors but of course few of you are already with some sap hcm background or core hr background or some any other kind of HR backgrounds, but when it comes to success factors, as every one of you are new here, so for to get hands-on onto the success factor system first, 
we deal with some topics of introduction to mastery so introduction to mastery is basically to give you an idea about how success factors functions what are the uh, terminologies navigation systems involved in it all that introduction level and the base configurations that are common for any module the base configurations which are common for any module of success factors all that things we'll look at introduction to mastery and after these two modules are done at the end we'll also be looking into the reporting part the way how the standard success factors pre-delivered reports or dashboards are available or the way we can build some custom dashboards and reports all that reporting part we'll be looking at so these are the this is the actual curriculum that we designed here at tech brains okay to make sure that the participants take get the most out of it with respect to the current market demand okay and then next let me just uh, give you an idea about the objective of this course as well that we mainly concentrate here so we make sure that you have very good examples of the real time scenarios when we are going to the live sessions guys it's not that it, uh, it's not like we play some uh, videos or we just uh, 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 open some ppt in front of you it's most of the time 90 percent of our session time will be on the success factor system configuring something real time and all that examples what i take is we being parallelly the real-time professionals whatever are the real-time scenarios we get regarding any topic we take in that concept and we discuss it's not that a basic example in the real-time oriented the way how we can experience and how we can we can deal with the situations is what the real-time experience or the real-time scenarios we particularly target here okay and one more thing to make sure that certification is ba basically an important thing in success factors engineering. that is how sap has actually designed it success factors would require certification and we make sure that all you guys are certification ready by the end of this course so definitely by the end of this course with at least two weeks of self-study you can definitely be eligible for appearing for certification and when i say certification ready it's nothing like any bookish knowledge kind of we make sure you have all the functional expertise to handle your own independent projects after the trainings. Okay. And at last thing, uh, some of the people keep asking me about the extent of customization that we can actually achieve in success factors. So for that, it's basically a concept called as MDF. Metadata framework is one basic important concept so that we basically have its most applicability under employee central module also. So in detail sessions on MDF we have, and we'll discuss that. So people at the early stage have this question. So just to highlight for them, I'm just mentioning even this last topic of MDF, customizing capabilities like MDF, metadata framework we see. So this is all we make sure through this training program. Okay. And one last thing is with respect to eligibilities and the prerequisites. So most of the people, uh, approach me saying that I am from a non-technical background. I'm from a core HR background. Okay, I'm from recruitment background. So I'm eligible for success factors is the question that most of the people come up with. So with I being experienced in success factors with around five and a half years, I can con I can confidently say guys that success factors doesn't would not expect basically success factors would not expect any prerequisite knowledge at all. It's all about an educated person. It's all about an educated person who can basically understand the HR processes is definitely eligible for success factors training. So among around 500 plus participants that I've been training, so I have participants from various backgrounds, SAP HCM background or uh, core HR background, recruiters, people who, who are even with some uh, ladies with some career gap in between, everyone. There are people who have been doing this training and uh, they were settled in various parts of the globe. So that main uh, mind uh, any question that any of you have in your mind still you can just completely take it out it's all about the way how you try and get, get trained now and how you practice and get certified that's it so that is what it makes you eligible for a career migration towards success factors nothing with respect to prerequisite knowledge okay yeah so this is all before i go into actually what success factor is that i want to make it very much clear so that it, it gives you more peace of mind in attending the sessions okay so the next thing is now we have to start discussing about success factors so what basically success factor is what it has in store and all so before i 
get into the actual content of SF. Uh, any particular questions uh, on these uh, above few slides that I've shared, gentlemen? The course content or the eligibility part. Anyone? Yeah, do we, I mean, like uh, payroll and time also will be covered in this uh, training? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, basically under employee central. Time off can be part, but so when it comes to success factors, uh, standard content of employee central. So it is only the core employee central with position management is the actual content. On top of it is what the time off comes up. Time off is nothing but the leave management part. So even that we'll be looking in our content, but employees, uh, when you say payroll, payroll is basically an on-prem solution part. So on the old SAP HCM level, whatever is the payroll solution that we have is the same payroll solution that even now in under success factors we claim. It is just rebranded as employee central payroll. Okay, so in the project, EC consultant is different. ECP employee central payroll consultant is different. So that is a different role, different pro so certification, different uh, career uh, altogether. Employee central is a different career altogether. So employee central payroll is a one more different certification separately. So employee central payroll is not part of our training. It's employee central core with position management and time off is what we look through. Okay. okay it, is, it is more likely same as the on-premise payroll. That's what you're saying. Completely, completely. 95% it's all the same. That 5% what I mentioned is also about how the way how the customers are now getting it integrated with success factors is what some basic additional knowledge in the ECP certification they involve. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Success factors that they don't have any separate payroll solution. SAP did not design any new payroll solution at all. It's the same old as existing uh, SAP HCM payroll solution itself. They have rebranded it as EC payroll and they are using it. The same info types, the same PCR schemas, functions, tables. It's all the same. It's all. It's all the same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So more about uh, any anything on ECP, we'll discuss at the end of the session. So that who are not aware of the even HC, HCM payroll and all, they might be confused. I'll just park any other discussion on ECP to the end of the sessions. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions on these few slides, gentlemen? Till now. Uh, so sure, I'm sure here. Yeah, Anshul, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, regarding the certification that you have told, so certification is mandatory to get a job in SAP, this factor? In major cases, so officially if you have to say yes, you are required to be certified and cracking a certification in success factors is definitely not a rocket science. Okay, so they, they have has designed it in such a way. Normally in other platforms, once you start working in the real time after you get a uh, so experience of few years, then is where uh, it's good for you to go for a certification. But here in success factors, they have made it in that way. You should be first uh, be certified for you getting an opportunity in the real time. So that is the way how they have designed it. So they are their the examination level and all will be definitely to a stage where a person not without a real time experience how the certification should be there. Till that extent only they have designed it. So clearing the certification. Uh, with proper training is not at all a rocket science okay but yes they have designed it in such a way that only a certified consultant can be placed as a real-time consultant in front of a customer even if few companies stay hire you without certification you will be confined as a back background consultant you cannot go to the customer office you cannot travel you can you, your name is not visible to the customers for whom you are working there will be some other certified consultants who goes in front of the customer. They take the requirement gathering. They give you the requirements and you have to sit in the back office and work. That is what happens if you are not certified. So more details on certification also have one of the slides. I'll uh, give you more details on that as well. Okay. So this SAP success factor will get from SAP uh, success factor only or like how we can, like we have to take from them only, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's an official certification from uh, SAP. We have a training.sap.com. From that website, we have to schedule an exam and we have to write the exam and all. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. And just we have uh, one slide dedicatedly I've designed for that. Uh, more clarity on it also. Once we go forward, I'll definitely, definitely give on that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay, let me get started, guys. So it's that now. The first thing that we have to discuss is what is actually success factors. Okay, so 
few of you are already aware, aware about success factors few of you are completely layman towards what is success factors few of you have a, uh, it's like a, a middle point you know something you don't know something so for the benefit of everyone let me first give you a very basic clarity here so success factors is basically a cloud based hr solution guys hr solution human resource solution the way how you run a hr operations in a company is what success factors can help you in so some people think like success factors is the complete cloud version of sap no it's not the complete uh, sap it's basically the hr part of it the way how the hr solutions can be utilized is what success factors uh, can help for so like right from the hire to retire activities of an employee hiring of an employee his uh, data maintenance the way how we handle his data record with respect to various data update, updates promotions transfers salary increments okay deputations whatever you store till his separation or termination from the company the entire life cycle of activities is what the uh, success factor solution basically takes care of and the two important points about success factor is the way uh, i mean the set of modules what it has generally so normally when you when you take about, about any hr operations in any company so recruitment is one division of hr that comes up next uh, the way how the employee hiring and uh, maintenance will happen is one kind of you have the performance management process the way how the performance and all will be handled next the career development planning processes learning management process all these are the different divisions of hr that we normally see in any organization to deal with all these we have the digitalized solution and success factors for learning management giving an employees a, a platform to learn new skills and all uh, to develop their skills a, a concept called as career development planning okay employee central to maintain all the employee data and how do we handle their leaves and all okay next performance management how do we set the goals and we measure the ratings of the employees every year all these are the solutions that we have in success facts so the combination of core hr being the employee central module employee central will be called as a core hr module and talent solutions will become all these recruiting management learning management career development planning all that other solutions will be called as talent solutions so that a customer today going for success factors need not look out of sf for any other product so for recruiting if i go for sf for reporting i go for some other third party tool in the market for learning management i go for other third party tool in the market it's not required a customer opting success factors they have every hr solution within sf and all these modules are internally integrated with each other for a seamless data transfer wherever required so success factors gives a customer a, a a a platform where every hr solution is coming under one roof that is the main success of success factors today in the global market guys that is what the point number 2 basically highlights it has a very good combination of core hr and talent solutions so what are all the talent solutions basically in few slides i'll also show you that and next important factor of its success is the way how it can be implemented deployed or implemented is both standalone approach and hybrid solutions both are supported today if a customer wants to implement success factors with all the solutions right from employee central every performance management recruitment management everything in success factors without any other system dependencies we call it as standalone in that way they can go or today if customer is already having some kind of hr solution that might be sap hcm old hr solution or any oracle hcm people soft or uh, they have some uh, local dot net based any hr solutions anything today they want to start with success factors with only one or two modules they, they are not coming with the entire solution here they don't want to scrap their old system all of a night okay so from uh, in the, in this new system they want to start with performance management and goal management the way how the performance process will run that one single module if they want to start with they want to first experience how sf functions so now the remaining processes and all are happening on their old system with only performance management happening on success factors with an integration of data between the, these both systems is called hybrid solutions their existing whatever is their hr solution they still want to continue there with on success factors one so one solution or two solution they want to implement with integration between both the systems is the hybrid solution 
So like this, either a customer wants to come to success factors completely at once, or they want to come at a phase wise with integration between other systems as, as a hybrid solution, both are supported. So these are the main reasons for the global success of success factors in the global market guys. The set of modules it says, the way how it can be deployed to the customers, all that. This is at a high level into to give you an idea about how the way how success factor stands in the today's market. And also to give you an idea about where it has actually started, gentlemen. So most of us are aware about success factors maximum from past seven, eight years normally. But it is actually in the market since 2002. In 2002, success factor has been started with one single module called as performance management and goal management. So success factor has started in 2002 with performance and goal management module. And from that day itself, they are into the cloud based platform. Okay. And year by year, year by year, they have been developing new solutions and they have been acquiring some solutions from the market, which are doing good. And for a period of 10 years, that is from 2002 to 2011 ending, that is for a period of 10 years, they are the global market leaders in cloud based HR talent solutions in cloud based HR talent solutions. I am saying the talent solutions because they don't have the employee hire, uh, hiring process, terminations, promotions, transfers, these things success factors was not able to handle till 2011. It's only for the already hired employees. How can we run the learning management system? How can we run the uh, performance management? These things only SF can handle. The actual process of uh, uh, hiring the employees, maintaining all their employee data, handling promotions, transfers, termination, all that is not part of the success factors at that solution, at that point of time. But re with respect to the other talent solutions, from 2002 to 2011 for a period of 10 years, they are the global market leaders. Okay, so then in 2011, December, SAP acquired success factors, guys. SAP acquired success factors in December 2011. And now it is officially called as a product of SAP, where in 2012, immediately after the acquisition, SAP introduced employee central as one more module, which is actually missing uh, the flavor of employee hiring activities, promotions, transfers, termination. So SAP has brought up that uh, EC as a one more module, employee central. And of course, today that has become the hot cake module across the globe. Okay. So even if other talent solutions are equally important, but Employee Central definitely has its significance with a large number of implementations with more investment going towards that module and all. So that is what it is. And today we success factors uh, starts as is, I mean uh, stands at a place where its uh, its solution is applicable in 168 countries across the globe with its uh, solution and available in 40 languages, 40 prominent significant languages. So Chinese for Ch China. Hindi for India, Arabic for Middle East, okay, Japanese, Korean, Italian, Portuguese, Dutch, like this, all the prominent 40 important languages with its solution applicable in 168 countries today, guys. That clearly shows us the global consulting opportunities that we have in success factors. The global consulting opportunities with all the travel, uh, uh, with, with all the travel opportunities that we get is what we can see here in success factors clearly. Okay. So this is where success factor has started and what it is today uh, from the period of last 19 years since since 2002 where it has started till 2020 today where we are. Okay, so this is what is success factors where it has started and next one more thing is know about this cloud. So obviously everyone should agree that today success factor is definitely a global market leader with, with respect to cloud based HR solutions. That's clear already. But what is this cloud basically? Why are we stressing on this cloud based cloud based? What is this particularly that you are highlighting? Okay, uh, what should we know about it? Is that so success factors basically is a cloud platform guys. And when I say cloud, uh, what it is, is that we are not actually something uh, new towards cloud solution in our day to day uh, lives, the way how we are using your LinkedIn your Facebook, your Gmail, your office mail on your mobile, everything, these are all cloud-based. Okay, say example, you're uploading a photograph into the Facebook. 
Okay, once you upload it today, even after 10 years, if you log in into your Facebook account, you can still look at your photograph, whatever you have uploaded. So it, it need not be the same mobile or the same laptop that you are logging in. Okay, so the data is not stored on your device. It's remotely stored somewhere. And whenever you want to look at it, you're just logging in with an internet connection, you're able to access it. That means that data, whatever you have been uploading into Facebook is stored somewhere in the Facebook server. And you, do, you really don't know where the Facebook database server is. It might be in any part of the globe. So this way of remotely hosting the customer data and accessing it on demand whenever we require with a proper authentication using internet is what the cloud-based platforms are technically called as SaaS model gentlemen. Software as a service model. Software as a service. Here success factor is a service for us. We are not going to install success factor as a software on your laptop. To access success factors, you just need an internet connection and a browser. Success factors accessing would only require an internet connection with a browser. You don't require a software to be installed in your laptop. And any customer implementing success factors, all their employee data, their organization data, the configuration data, what we do in the system, everything, all that data is stored in a server which is officially hosted by SAP in some other part of the globe. So the customer will not have their database in their own office anymore. So here the database uh, responsibility of the customer will be taken by the official SAP. So the customers need not invest on any hardware like uh, servers, backup servers, network consultants, their salaries, all this has been vanished. It's only a system they use regularly for maintaining various data and all. All the data is, meant, is hosted in a remote location in any part of the globe. So this way of remotely hosting the customer data and accessing it on demand whenever we require just with a proper authentication, internet and a browser is what the SaaS model or basically the cloud model is. Okay, and those remote locations where we have the customer servers are called as data centers guys. Those remote locations where we have customer servers are called data centers and we have around 15 data centers operating across the globe by SAP as on today. Just to give you an example of a couple of them. So we have data center number two, which is in Amsterdam, Netherlands. And we have data center number 10, which is in Sydney, Australia. And similarly, we have one in South Africa, one, one in Saudi Arabia, a couple of them in North America like that around 15 data centers that are being operated for all the global customers spread across the globe. Okay, so this is what basically is a, a, a cloud or a SaaS model is. Any questions here guys? Is that clear? Fine then. So moving on to the next thing. So after I explain what is success factors, what is basically success factors and then what is cloud model and all the next question what people ask me is the reasons for why success factors okay this might be a cloud based and this is how the cloud functionality basically uh, uh, looks like but why should we go for this cloud why is sap insisting us to go for this cloud based solutions is that here the main point we have to realize is it's not SAP insisting the customers to go for this cloud-based approach. It is the customer's demand globally that forced SAP to, to concentrate on cloud-based solutions. The global customer base across the globe is actually insisting for a cloud-based computing, cloud-based solutions. That made SAP acquire success factors. When it's already existing, good going solution from last four decades is already there, the on-premise solution why they invested on success factors why they acquired success factor is customers are looking for cloud-based solutions so that is why sap acquired it and the reasons and the advantages why people are looking for cloud-based solutions is here the hardware part the hardware maintenance cost is completely gone guys so when sap success factor is taking care of my database i need not to purchase a separate server i need not plan for any backup servers I need not hire any network or basis consultants to take care of that. I need not have a dedicated room for servers. I need not plan for any backup. Uh, I need not power, uh, plan for any power backups. All this the entire cost which has been involved in this annual maintenance of the servers 
is totally reduced that and that is a great financial benefit to the customers and the important go to market point for success factors go to market point and so that is what it results in low ownership cost the total ownership cost of the project is getting reduced we call it as low toc okay and next is with respect to the licensing model so one more important uh, commercial benefit that the customers can enjoy is with respect to the licensing model guys that is a customer implementing success factors today definitely they have to buy some licenses okay and that licenses is only for the modules what they would like to implement now it's not they, they it's not the license cost they have to pay for success factors as a complete solution within success factors which modules today i'm targeting if i'm planning for uh, employee central recruitment as the modules only those solutions will actually uh, pay the license cost for and if it is uh, five six different modules then the cost of the license will be different for only two modules or one module that your license cost will be different definitely so the customers are not forced to pay huge values right from the day one second thing it is completely headcount based how many users are going to use your solution only those many licenses you are required to take say today you, this year you have thousand employees in the company you take thousand licenses of any any module next year while you are renewing it it's it's annual uh, renewal process whenever you are renewing your licenses if your headcount came to 800 you renew it for only 800 so again that is a commercial benefit it's not that once you pay this value it's the same value it keeps on incurring nothing like that and the other year again your headcount increased to 1200 you can increase it so that way it's totally commercially uh, benefited and there are few modules which would take only subset of licenses say example performance management system process if a company has 1000 employees but 200 employees are all the uh, uh, drivers peons clerks kind of who are not that much educated they, they can't handle the system they can't log in into success factor system so there is no point in paying license for those users who don't use and they don't log in into the system at all so for them you need not pay the licenses again if you purchase 800 licenses only also it is supported sf will accept that so we have few modules which even function in that way so during all this process customers are again benefited with respect to the licensing cost also so that is one more go to point go to market point and then the next point that comes up is the release management guys so the release management is all about success factors comes up with updates every off yearly so till last six months it, it used to be every quarterly from just last six months back they have changed it to every off yearly that is once in every six months there will be new updates that will be coming in every product of success factors it might be employee central recruitment performance management any solution sf will come up with new updates that is today in april if i'm if my company is going live with success factors it's not that till today what are the features i am only eligible for that after six months if there are any new updates coming in i am eligible to use those updates also free of cost any new updates coming in even for the next 10 years 20 years also every update i can enjoy free of cost and the way how we can upgrade our system is as simple as we update our mobile apps guys the way you go into your mobile phone to the, to the google play store or the apple app store and you just search for your apps and you click on update button as simple as that you can update it you don't even require any technical assistance in making your solutions upgraded so that is the beauty that exists here so success factors comes up with off yearly updates on each and every solution that might be a new feature being given new functionality being given or the ui experience being uh, being improved that can be anything so that is one more beauty of success factors advantage or basically a cloud solution advantages and last but not least the accessibility you can access the, the cloud based solutions from anywhere anytime any part of the globe on any device okay it's not that the same device you regularly keep using you should only use in that nothing it's just an internet connection in a browser that you would require you can access it on anywhere and even for mobile phones and ipads kind of you have the apps as well success factors android app is there success factors uh, uh, apple app is there okay so we can make use of any of the platform to access the data from anywhere anytime any part of the globe so all these advantages of saas are nothing but the reasons for why cloud why success factors generally
okay so even tomorrow if anybody asks you that when you are migrating your careers towards success factors what is the speciality of it you can clearly say that so the future is all about cloud okay any questions here okay so basically to give you just a, uh, the official sap's representation of all these cloud solutions guys so this is the way how they actually represent the cloud set of modules the core hr being the employee central in the center with all the other talent solutions like recruiting compensation performance management uh, learning development programs all these are the various solutions that are internally present within success factors along with employee central and are all tightly integrated with each other and all these solutions of success factors are actually classified into four categories guys so they are like categorized into these four categories of hr solutions talent solutions hr analytics and social collaboration so under core hr it's obviously the mighty module of employee central that falls and under talent solutions we have recruiting management performance management compensation lms learning management like this various other talent solutions so this second category of talent solutions is what that made success factor a global market leader for a period of 10 years since 2002 to 2011 what made sap recognize success factor is this set of modules of course in 2012 sap introduced the employee central and success factors and today it is again a most significant module and under hr analytics we have one dedicated module for uh, advanced analytics guys apart from the normal regular reporting dashboard whatever you can perform if you want to have very advanced analytics on the data of all the above modules okay like pie charts based bar graphs based reports uh, compare comparing your uh, your company's data with the industry benchmark data all that can be something that is available under the workforce analytics and planning a dedicated module for that but of course not so much in demand this product is still getting matured of course sf has given one dedicated area for this advanced analytics part and the last one is called a module called as jam so we don't even uh, call it as a module guys you can just call it as a add on application it's an add on application that every customer of success factors will be eligible to use okay it's it doesn't even have a license anybody can use that it's not a module it doesn't have any certification at for at a consultant level it's all like a platform of uh, it's, it's it's like a social collaborative platform the way we have facebook linkedin and all so jam is one thing that will give the employees of one organization a platform where they can connect with each other say example my company is having offices in london middle east and india there are few employees sitting in dubai there are few employees sitting in london few in india for for all the employees of these three locations to give a common platform to interact and collaborate with each other this kind of jam as a solution that will help us the way how you can have some videos or uh, photos uploaded in your facebook similar way you can also have the videos photos can that can be uploaded on jam so every employee will have a uh, facebook kind of a wall there jam wall we say so there you can post that you can conduct some uh, surveys polling questions you can write some articles like in the way we write in linkedin the linkedin articles kind of we can write with various things we can do where this is completely add is an add on application to bring a platform for all the employees of one organization to collaborate in one single location so these are all the various uh, solutions that we have that we basically see in the success factors business processing solutions and just to give you a list of all all of them in one single place so these are all the modules guys employee central pmgm recruiting management succession planning compensation learning management all these various solutions so the the employee central and recruiting management are the main core areas that we concentrate in our uh, our uh, training curriculum here at tech brains okay so employee central and recruiting management are a global demand so initially it used to be for pmgm but for, but from the almost from one one and a half year it is a raise in demand for recruiting management so recruiting management is now something that stands in the second place 
pushing PMGM to the third place actually. So EC and recruitment are some modules that we basically concentrate here in our curriculum. These are all the various HR solutions that Success Factors basically supports. Any questions still here? Come on guys, uh, anything that you have in your mind, just get it clear of here itself. So nothing shy, no one knows you. So you are independent, others are independent. Come up with a question. No one sees you. It's only the voice that comes out. Any simple uh, hello. clear? Hello, Shiva, Saili here. I, I would like to know whether we'll have a, a, a de de demo, real-time demo and even access to uh, the application so as to uh, try at our end during trainings yeah. of for all these modules okay absolutely absolutely so when it is uh, when you say like time kind of yeah so every concept of configuration what we do is uh, is something in front of you i configure it so first we'll discuss five ten minutes theoretically then we start configuring it by the end of the session we see the result out of it and we leave the session that's the way and every topic related you will be getting the documents after the session okay so uh, after the session every day the relevant topics documents of that weekly assignments of that will be posted and you will be given one dedicated access you will be given one dedicated user id on your name in which you can parallelly practice every day after the session whatever i told in the session the similar configuration you can try in your login okay so all this will be arranged okay yeah and then yeah so one more thing that i would like to give you guys uh, uh, an exposure into guys so basically in the success factors consulting we come across two different systems so we as a consultant we see two systems the end users who implemented success factors will see only one system we as a consultant will see two systems that is the first one called the provisioning system which is called as a back end of success factors the back end of success factors where here this is a place where only the certified success factors consultants will have the access so the certified success factors consultants only can access the provisioning systems and here is the place where 15 percent maximum 15 percent of the project activities will be done rest of the 85 percent will happen on other system called the instance which is called a print in system we call it as print in because that is a system where everyone sees so if i implement success factors for coca cola beverages limited okay if i implement success factors for coca cola beverages limited all the employees of coca cola company can access success factors it's not uh, success factors is handled only by the hr team no so success factors access will be given to each and every employee of that company so if there are 5,000 employees, all the 5,000 IDs will be given. If it is 2,000 employees, all the 2,000 IDs will be given that way. So this is a way how we can actually have uh, the success factors operates and the front end system, what they access everybody, they log in into the system, they see their own personal data, their salary data, their manager, their HR reporting data, all this is in the instance system, the front end instance system, which is, the place where 85% of our configurations also will do. So we as a consultant to configure the system also, 85% of our configurations we do on the front end. And the basic initial activities, what we have to do, the basic things that are very important, obviously, it's, it is only 15%, but that is very crucial activities, is what we do perform in the provisioning side. So provisioning side of the system is accessible only by certified success factors consultants. That is the reason why I mentioned it is important to be get certified. If you are not certified, even if a company hires you, it is they, they should also hire some other certified consultant also to run a project. At least one certified consultant should be there to run a project because we need a provisioning access. Only a certified consultant will get the provisioning access. Taking his ID, we have to do some configurations only having instance access configuration will not complete that is a way okay so these are the two different systems and uh, just to give you a look and feel of these systems guys so let me first show you the front end system of success factors how it looks like just a moment yeah 
So this is the front end system where once we implement a uh, Surface Factor software for a customer, this is the way how they actually look their login page. Of course, this is basically a demo system where we can enhance this in an actual real customer system with more beautiful background, uh, some background images or more decent colors and all, we can enhance it. So everybody can log in with their credentials, what they have in that system. The company's logo can be displayed here. Once you log in into the system with your credentials, so whatever permissions are given to you, whichever areas you can access, all that will be uh, given you an access here, guys. So normally, whenever we log in, we can get to this home page. The first page that gets opened up is the home page or the landing page you can call. This is the landing page. So this is a page where we'll have lot of blocks, lot of blocks of information. All these blocks are like tiles. We call them as tiles. Few are square shaped, few are uh, rectangular shaped. All these are the different kinds of tiles we see. Okay, so these give you insight into various other internal parts of the system. So these are the direct single click access to, to the internal parts of the system. Clicking on this performance process, it will take you some internal part of the performance. Clicking on this team is something that will take you to your subordinates that are present in the system. This gives you exposure of the some data with respect to employee data. Okay, some analytics on the fingertip access at the home page itself. And uh, you have uh, the very first one called to do list. The to do list is something a, a current logged in person, whoever logged in into the system, whatever are the pending items that he has to close, that might be approvals, performance reviews, leave request approvals, anything that all will come will be appearing here in the to do list on the first section of the page. So it's automatically say if I have to uh, approve some recruiting approvals, I have to take some interviews, I have to do a performance feedback process for my subordinates. Okay, or I have to approve a leave of my subordinate, anything that can be any pending activity of a logged in user will be available on the very first page on the top of the page called as to do section. So that makes the things things, uh, uh, things very simpler that we have that we can definitely make sure that on time we are completing all your approvals and all. So this is one way. And from here you can navigate into various other internal modules of success factors also. So if you have implemented goals, performance, compensation management, career development planning, succession planning, recruiting like this, all the modules access we'll be having here, guys. It totally depends on again the permissions. So if a customer implemented five modules, but the current logged in person, if he is given permission for accessing only three areas, only three areas he'll be able to see. So I being a super admin in this system, I'm able to access all the list of complete modules. But in the real time, it totally depends on the extent of permissions that are provided on which they can actually access those areas. Okay, and so from here, if you go into the employee file, so this employee file is a place where every individual employee's data can be found here. You can see the example. Now I logged in as Anya Singh, employee called as Anya Singh, I have logged in. So in her login now, whatever data this company already stored, that is her personal information, her dependent details, her communication details like email addresses, phone numbers, her salary information, such kind of every minute information is all found in this profile page. We call as employee file or profile, it's all the same. So the personal information that includes their first name, last name, gender, marital status, all that, nationality, all that. And going down the contact details, emergency contact details, address information of the employee, the dependent details about the employee, the national IDs like PAN number, Aadhaar number, if it's US SSN number, like the different national IDs, work permits, if they have any uh, work permit to work in any other countries, all that work permit information like this, the bank account details for salary processing, payment information we say, like this, everything can be hosted in success factors against an employee record level. So more detail of this, like what all categories we can actually store, uh, uh, which informations uh, we, the employees can edit, which HR only can edit, kind of different things, more in detail, we'll discuss in our regular sessions. And to give you more idea, 
So every employee will have this settings page on the right hand top corner of the place where you have your name displayed. If you click on it, there will be an option called settings that will be displayed. If you go under that, this is what a place that will help you to set your own password. Whenever an employee would like to reset his own password at any point of time without depending on administrators or anybody's support, they can directly reset their own password as simple as we reset our LinkedIn password, Facebook password kind of we can do that. And a more beautiful option is change language. Say I told you that success factor is today supported in 40 languages. So we initially given the user his ID in English US. But if he feels he's more comfortable in Korean language, if he's more comfortable in Arabic or he's in comfortable in Ch Chinese, Japanese, anything, they can change the language here, guys. So here say we have Korean as a language. If I choose Korean and if I click on switch, all the standard areas of SL will be automatically translated into Korean language. So now the entire system of success factors is now going to turn into the Korean language. So you see here everything is start starting to display in the Korean language. So the standard things what as if pre delivered will be in auto translated anything while training uh, while customizing the product. If we make any custom things that is our responsibility to handle the translations. But for all the standard areas which are pre delivered, they all will be in auto translated to Korea. The complete list of all the modules, all these uh, standard areas are auto translated. Next. This is a way. So this is one more good feature that SF offers to all the uh, print end users so at any point of time they can easily change between the languages they can switch between the languages and if I want to go back to um, English I can again go go to that place and I can switch it back and I even do not know Korea gentlemen it's basically the navigation I'm remembering and I'm switching it back. Okay, so this is how uh, the success factors print end system looks like. Of course, there are a lot more areas that you have to look into. Okay, but uh, more in detail, we'll go in our regular sessions. So this is here at this situation. It is basically to give you an idea of uh, the look and feel of the success factor system, the front end system of instance, uh, which basically doesn't give us a uh, feeling like we are working on some uh, product. It's all look like as if you are just navigating on some Facebook pages or LinkedIn pages kind of the screens are more intuitive. Okay, so it doesn't give you feel like you're actually configuring or working on something more beautiful screens. Okay, and uh, hey, uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, please. Hello. Yeah, uh, uh, sure. Uh, like, you know, just uh, we have uh, another tool like uh, the workday, right? Okay, so yeah. what would be the, the major differences like uh, you know, success factors and uh, and and workday? Yeah, so three main things. The one thing is success factors market is globally spread, where the workday market is highly concentrated on the North American region only. First thing. Second thing, the solution applicability. So the success factor solutions have their extensibility and uh, integration possibilities with any other product in the market. So you have to integrate your success factors with any biometric systems. Okay, any payroll systems or any benefit systems, anything the extent of uh, integration capability is more where definitely Workday has a huge limitation with respect to its integration capabilities. That is one thing. And third thing, even the consultants the professionals who want to migrate it into success factors. It's anyone who just got trained. They can go. They can go appear for certification and with that certification you can get into the career. But in workday the clause is that you should be first employed with some workday partnered company. You should be working with them where once they certify you that yes, this is a guy who is working with us and we are a workday partnered company only then you are eligible for success factors. Oh, sorry. Uh, then only then you are eligible for workday certification. But in success factors, even you are completely unemployed person. Also, you can. It's all about the knowledge. You have to get trained and you can get certified. 
So this is the key differences we see in the path of workday and success factors. And when it comes to the strong points of uh, why success factors, what now? Why not workday? Yes, it's again its total applicability of its solutions with respect to the dedicated payroll solution already in place, the SAP HCM payroll solution, which is a global leader in the past four decades. Even ADP payroll, you you guys know ADP payroll uses the backend SAP HCM payroll solution where there are global Fortune 500 companies, major share of the Fortune 500 companies running on SAP payroll, which is a fruit payroll solution with all the localizations of the respective countries. Okay, so where Workday uh, misses all these areas. Okay, and when it comes to the solution applicability, that is for in 168 countries, it is now supported where Workday doesn't have it spread, spread in those many countries. So it is that if a company is only concentrated in US, only concentrated in Australia, kind of it's okay. But if the company is having their offices in various parts of the globe, the Fortune 500 companies kind of, which have their uh, footprints in various parts of the globe, then they need a HR solution that can have all the purposes served for all the localizations. It's not that it can handle the US and US localization or the uh, legal changes. Uh, it cannot handle uh, the Middle East or India, Asia related regions. It doesn't work where success factor has that uh, applicability across the so uh, across the regions with respect to its solution. Okay. Yeah. So these are all the variables when we have to discuss in the uh, in regard to success factors and workday. Of course, we have to officially definitely agree that uh, these are the two top most competitors. But uh, uh, when the word of success factors chasing workday has been now turned to workday chasing success factors because it's already uh, success factor has proved to be the global market leader uh, pushing the workday to the next place. So now let me just quickly also open the provisioning side of the system and show you guys just to give you a high level UI uh, introduction of it quickly will not take more of your time. Just a moment, please. I'm just logging in. Yeah. So this is the provisioning system we say, guys. The provisioning system, which is a back end of success factors, only where a certified consultant will normally access. So for the front end system that you are using, there will be this back end login, which is a place where we can have all the basic activations that can be done. So it's maximum 15% of things only we do in the system. So we can just go into a company and we have a company settings kinds of things that are available here. So going into the company settings. So this is a place where major share of activities is all about activations, which languages you want to activate out of 40, which modules you want to activate in that module, which functionalities and features you want to activate, deactivate. It's all about that. And activating deactivating is also all through checkboxes. In this page, you will have almost thousand plus checkboxes for each and every functionality, feature, and all. You have a checkbox. You activate a checkbox, you deactivate a checkbox based on which the functionalities and features will start being enabled and disabled. And here you have a section for language packs. All the 40 major languages what SF supports today are all listed here. So in English, you can see both the UK version of the English and US version of the English are also supported. Okay, the Mexican language, the Spanish, French, Canadian, Italian, Hungarian, and here you have even Hindi that supports for in India, Arabic for Middle East, Thai, Korean, Japanese, like this. 40 prominent languages. Which languages your customer would like to implement? Only those will be will be selected here, because every customer doesn't there uh, doesn't require every language. Wherever there are locations, uh, their working locations are there, only for that geographical location related languages are required. Only those checkboxes will select, the others will be deselected. And if a customer has a license for compensation management module, we'll activate compensation management, else we'll not. In compensation, based on the requirement gathering, which features and functionalities are required, which are not required, based on that we'll activate, deactivate the checkboxes like this. So provisioning side of the system is, is a, uh, the UI is also not that much great as, we, as you see the front end instance part because this is only accessed by the consultants. They don't invest a lot here in the UI of this system, but in the roadmaps coming soon, this UI is also going to increase. 
uh, uh, it's uh, I mean uh, the UI is going to improve basically. And so this is all about activations and uh, few switches to be switched on and switched off kind of. So maximum 15% of our project activities only will be under provisioning and rest all will be under 85% under the instance. So more in detail, what do we do, where do we do and all, we'll discuss in our coming up regular sessions, guys. And as someone asked me uh, about certification model, let me just also throw some light on the certification part. So basically, uh, we have to do the official train, uh, official uh, certification of SF through a website called training.sap.com. It's an official uh, website, training.sap.com. In that, we have to subscribe for this something called as SAP certification in cloud. So we have uh, a, a program or a package you can call. Uh, the code of it is called CER006. Even in the internet, if you just uh, search for this code called CER006, it is SAP certification and cloud is the package. So that will cost you around uh, 40 to 45,000 inclusive of taxes in the Indian currency. So that is something that gives you six attempts, six different attempts where you can write six different certifications. It's with a, with a one time cost of 40 to 45,000. You can write six different modules of certifications. Every module of SF has a certification. It's not a complete certification as SF, uh, you, you have to say. Every module of SF has its independent certification, guys. Okay, and then here, it comes up with total six items. So obviously, you can write six different certifications and every module will have 80 questions. Every module will come up with 80 questions of uh, exam with uh, three hours of time, completely multiple choice, no negative marking, and the pass percentage for the modules will depend between 50 to 65, sorry, 60 to 75 percent. Module to module, it will differ. So employee central module might be having 68 percent. Recruitment might be having 65 percent only. Some other module might have 74 percent. Like that, they keep varying the pass percentage. Maximum between 16 to 75 is what we see the pass percentage that they give normally. So out of 80 questions is what you have to get that score. Every question, every correct answer will give you one point. For uh, wrong answers, there are no negative points. Completely multiple choice again. You don't have any descriptive answers, lengthy descriptions. You need not type anything. It's all about radio buttons and check boxes. So this is how the certification model would actually look like. So at the end of our sessions, the way how you have to practice, prepare, where you have to go and register for your certifications, more details on that will definitely give you. Shiva, yeah. uh, this is Prithvi. Yeah, Prithvi. Uh, can you give us some light on Delta certification? Yeah, definitely. So as I've told you guys that success factors comes up uh, off yearly releases. Every six months they come up with some releases. So every time whenever uh, they release some new updates to make sure that all the consultants are up to mark with respect to the new updates. They are following the new updates about the features and all. SF has brought this concept called Delta exams. Delta is that say today you are certified on employee central, the main certification you have done. Okay. After this, the next six months, whenever there are new updates coming, there will be a Delta document that will be released. Some whatever are the updates that are released in this uh, six months release. So about that updates, a small 30, 40 pages of document will be released with all the updates mentioning in that. After going through the document, at the end of the document, there will be one small assessment test. Maximum there will be around five questions, nine questions kind of, that's it. It's not like an official main certification kind of. It's just a self-assessment at the end of the exam that you'll be having. Five questions or seven questions or nine questions max. It never went into two digit also. So that assessment, you have to take it up at the end of the uh, document that you read. So you, you need an uh, assessment showing that you have cleared all the questions. If it is five, five out of five. If it is seven, seven out of seven, like that. In one attempt, you 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 got uh, six answers correct and one answers you 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 gone wrong. The score is six by seven. Read it again. Take it. This time you got five by seven. Again take it. This time you got seven by seven. That is the final one. You just have to save that copy in your laptop. You can just download that copy and you can save. So you even you take it hundred times, no problem. It's that SF wants to make sure that you have uh, read the document very well and you have answered seven by seven, five by five, or nine by nine complete answers that's it so that is very much important that 
sure. every time whenever delta comes up uh, let me please complete so whenever there is such kind of a delta comes up within 90 days of the delta released say example in the coming month of june there is a new delta being released so from the june to july august september by end of september they are required to complete their delta anybody missing their delta within 90 days of its release their actual certification will expire okay so as long you as long as you go clearing your deltas in a, once in every 6 months so your certification is throughout the life active okay by default there is no expiry date for your certification that you do but this deltas whenever you miss it is where your certification will expire where they, they definitely give you a decent time of 90 days to take the delta and definitely can everybody can complete it but this actual certification where we take is on one different site and the delta where we take is a different site so we call the place where we take the deltas is called learninghub.com learninghub.com from that website we actually have to write the deltas okay yeah any other so questions? is there any additional cost for delta yeah so learning hub is this website where that will be costing frankly speaking it will be costing you more than two lakhs per one year but no one will spend that cost from their own pocket no consultant in the globe will purchase learning hub on their self expenses that is something a company will be sponsoring any company who is having the success factors set of employees for them they will be sponsoring it because it is their responsibility to make sure their consultant certifications are not getting expired every company will sponsor it the cost at an individual cost level which is around almost 2.2 lakhs in indian currency when it is companies purchasing them on a bulk for all their employees in their company they will get it like just like 80000 75000 as the yearly price it's a huge discount that the companies will get almost like 25 percent price of the actual of the actual price kind of okay so every company will sponsor these employees and they'll be writing the deltas in that logins no one will purchase it on their self every company accenture wipro ibm any company you go they'll sponsor that uh, learning hub access to their consultants okay uh shiva just one more clarification on this uh, yeah so for example i have completed my main certification by end of uh, may or say june so maybe in the june as you mentioned there is one more uh, update will come from sf to take the examination before 90 days and uh, come before 90 days completion i am not on board of a success factor with any employer so how i can give that update delta yeah so in that case you don't have a learning hub access your certification would expire so when your certification got expired yeah. it main certification hub that you purchase the actual certification one first time what you purchased with 40 45 thousand in that you have written only one exam or two exams you still have four at four more attempts free of cost again you can take one more written one more you one more time you can write your certification that's it so for next six more months again your certification is valid after six months whatever is the delta coming in that is having nine more uh, I mean, three more months of period to complete the delta so these six months, that three months total, nine months, your certification is valid, where definitely you can clear your, uh, uh, you, you, you can get, acquire a job in that time. Nine months is too long, like that. So now yes. even you- Thank you, thank you. Start the training, by the time you complete it, so it's April, like May, June ending, you'll complete. So the certification, what you're going to write is definitely the next latest version. So that latest version, whatever you write, will be valid for six months. And the Delta that releases will give you three more months, total nine months, you are eligible for uh, uh, holding that you are a certified consultant and within that once you get your job deltas also you can clear it off thank you thank and you very much perfect guys any other questions yeah. gentlemen yeah shiva i mean uh, six items you mentioned right i mean um, uh, till how long they are available uh, those six items one year only or uh, how yes, it items one year. That's what I shown on the slide. It's one year validity. So within one year, you have to utilize that six items, and that's definitely a decent time. One year. So immediately, everyone, whenever they purchase, within first ten days itself, they'll write one certification. Within max one more month, they'll write a second certification. On an average, it's a common statistic. As soon as the people purchase it, within max one one and a half months, two certifications they'll write it. The other four items also, within one year, minimum other two modules they'll write. So even in the real time market, if you see the people with one certification, if you, you, you find 70 percent, 
people with two certifications you will find uh, the next 10-15% uh, three certifications with four, next five more percent like that people with more than three certifications are very very few so among very few of them I am one where I hold five certifications so people with five certifications you rarely count you can just count the uh, the numbers will be less than 100 people in the, in the entire globe like that so it's not that everyone should be required to be certified on all the modules of SF. so to get into the market minimum two modules are required once you are getting into the market you have settled down within the first one year people will take one or two additional modules that's it so no one will even completely use that six uh, items also for everyone on an average two items will be just uh, uh, just wasted nothing okay yeah Any other queries, guys? Perfect. So yeah, the main two things I observe here is with respect to certification, guys. Yeah, this is something that uh, before people enter into the market, uh, that's a small uh, confusion or a tension kind of a thing people express where it is completely a uh, waste of time. Okay, it's that success factors. Certification is definitely not a rocket science. You can easily clear it off. Whatever assistance that is required for you guys, I can definitely help you at the end of the training also. It's it's all about a proper preparation practice. You can definitely clear the certifications. It's very simple. All multiple choice, no negative marking and all. Okay, second thing. So these certifications, uh, how to maintain these deltas and all, it's a common way. It's, it, it, it's, it's a uh, common way that is included once you are into the SF uh, career it's it all happens automatically one after the other it's not that when you look out look into this uh, from outside the box you feel like oh, what is this what is this delta what is this 90 days and all it might be looking like a complex but once you're done your first certification automatically things will drive you towards the other things okay that is how SAP has designed this not at all a big deal fine gentlemen so this is all I would like to uh, basically give you guys an introduction into in detail so that every minute area about what is success factors how it functions what is certifications okay the way how you will be uh, uh, operating once you get into this all these high level things whatever i want to give you i have already delivered I have, uh, i'm on my target uh, hope that really gave you more insight into what success factor basically is so if you still have any questions you can definitely uh, contact us guys so ashok will be in touch with you you can uh, Definitely post your questions and we would uh, expect you guys to have in our regular session soon. Okay, so that's it. And thanks for all your time on this uh, weekend. Okay, yeah, so thank you guys. Let me sign off. So stay home, stay safe. All the best. Yeah. Thanks, Shiva. Uh, thanks, all. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you. Thank you, guys.